It's going to ah. get better every time. Yeah, but let's not let's not go for perfect, okay? All right, we're not going for perfect. Yeah, we are. Got to the chase. Got it. Hey, guys, I'm Cheryl Locke with Off the Jackson. We are here at SEMA 2019 in Las Vegas, and we are back again with Ed Beard Jr. and some of his airbrush art. And this time, he's got a different ride, and you have someone with you that's going to tell us a little bit about what we're going to see. That's right, Cheryl. So, Airbrush by Beard is what I go by, Ed Beard Jr. Um, this is a 55 Chevy owned by Joe Mealy, the owner. Uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about the origin of the car and the reason he decided to pick this as a moonshine runner theme. So, Joe, go ahead and tell us uh, how you got the car and how it got to the point where I was going to be involved. All right, the car is originally from South Florida. I moved down there in 2000 and I first bought a Buick GS 455 that I wanted to uh, restore. So I got referred to this little body shop, Ravenswood Paint and Body in Dania Beach, Florida. Uh, they instantly became my adopted family, small Italian, you name it. And <clears throat> I saw this sitting there in a lift, and at the time it was in pieces. This was probably 2002, 2003. Get around to 2009, I'm doing a 63 Nova Gasser, and I tell my buddies, all right, I'm all done building cars, and in the faithful words, unless you ever want to sell that 55 on the lift. Sure enough, three years later, were you really sure, uh, you know, serious about wanting to buy that car? I said, absolutely. So then the ball got rolling, and they paint a lot of black monochrome cars. They did my view it because they, I mean, think straight as can be. This was painted 20 years ago. Not his work, which he'll talk about, but the black on the car and all the body work has been done 20 years. So, you know, I look at it, and I said, man, that's a moonshine rub. So I started getting the, the idea that I wanted to get somebody involved to kind of give it that theme, push the car to the next level. So I started researching, researching, researching on the internet, and I think I found pictures of his van. Yep, is what I did. And I got to his website, and I sent him an email. And three and a half years later, here we both yeah, still stand, yeah, and, right. <laughs> and here's right. the car. So I'll tell you about how the theme came to be. Uh, as Joe said, he wanted a moonshine runner, right. and he wanted a tribute to his family ancestry, right. which is Dr. and Mrs. Mealy. Uh, he was his doctor, if I, an eye doctor, basically, but he also did a little moonshine. So we wanted to incorporate things that were personal to him and his family, and at the same time, make it, so how do you incorporate some of the builders of the car at Ravenswood. So he sent me some photographs that he took of the builders themselves, and I said, well, I can try to incorporate portraits into this but I got to think this out. So what I came up with was an idea. And I'm going to step aside so you can see what I'm talking about. The front of the car, imagine this car is being chased. So this is the getaway car. It just goes through the shed where the, the copper still and the oak collecting barrel is in the moonshine shed. Along with that, you typically would see the money that they stashed. You'd see poison pay, uh, signs. You'd see wanted posters and maybe a few other articles of some inspiration, like in the case of Junior Johnson's Wilt's Patriot paper that I have on the side. And so in the front, you see the explosion. What happens when moonshine flames start to get ignited, they become very rainbow colored, so much like tequila. And so you'll see that splattered, and as it's splattered, it just becomes puddles of this rainbow flame, and that's what moonshine does. I love that flame color. That's amazing. And the other thing too is, you know, being a 55, we wanted to keep the feel of the classic flame work in a design element, but yet still have a kind of a realistic effect of what it would happen if it puddled and caught on fire. So as you get towards the top here, going up around here, you start to get into more design element, a little more stylized flame. But yet, as you get down towards the front, it becomes more realistic. So I tried to cover both ends to give a flavor for both the stylized 55 look and at the same time, a more realistic look. The small details that are involved. The pressure gauge, if you look at that, you can see it's set up for the danger, max. You've got, of course, all the different copper tubing and the explosion from the barrels. But my favorite part of the front end is the $20 bills. So take a look at this one right here. This $20 bill actually has genuine uh, serial numbers from 1955 $20 bills. Looked them up on the collector's market and I found them. The only thing that we did is we made sure that Joe Mealy was the Secretary of Treasury and State. So we modified it just a little bit so it's not true counterfeit. As you come down the side on the passenger side, you get another, again, elements that would have been in the moonshine shed. You've got your bottles floating by. And here you have what would have been the newspaper at the time from the Wilts Patriot. And the only thing I did is I took a different picture of the 1944 that he raced and was escaping. He eludes, you know, Junior Johnson eludes police again. 
And then there's some little stories like this, like artist beard sets world record for the longest <laughs> amount of time spent on a mural, you know, because we'll, we'll put things like that in. Here's Joe Mealy, Doc Mealy's actual secret blend in their logo. And here we get to the wanted posters, which are actual portraits of the builders. And their nicknames, Wires, Mixer, and Tin Man. The reason for that is he was the electrical guy, he was the mixer for the paint, and Tin Man worked on metal. <laughs> and you know what? Now they're on a wanted poster. Yes, they are. Yep. And on the driver's side, I'll take you next. I want to show this paint is just amazing. So over here on the driver's side, you've got a little of the broken good old jugs of moonshine, triple X. You've got, of course, the warning deadly poison moonshine liquor, 250 award. And then here's Ma and Pa. These are the, old, the uh, original owners of the Ravenswood uh, Auto and Paint down there in Dania Beach, Florida. And there's Mike, who is the head honcho there. Now, the whole car was actually painted not far from Dania Beach from these guys. It was painted at H2 Auto Painting, which is a good friend of mine. That He's my affiliate shop, so whenever I have a job in Florida or South Florida, that's where we paint the mural work. So the last thing I want to show you is the little secret under the hood. I'm going to pop this in. Oh, we should have known. Ed Beard, there's, there's something hidden somewhere. So there you see the Doc and Mrs. Mealy Secret Blend logo, a little more stylized. You know, back in the early, late 50s, early 60s, it was popular to have the skull of crossbone just on any hot rod, you know. But um, that was, of course, a common logo for Moonshine. So I just, instead of doing the simple cartoon version, I upped it up the ante a little bit and gave it a little more life. Even down to the hand-painted. What, what else are we seeing under here, boys? This well, is not just a... It's a 540 cubic inch fuel-injected supercharged belt. Uh, there's a lot of really hidden details. Like this whole car is original steel except for the hood, so I didn't want to modify the uh, firewall. So we moved the engine forward an inch and three quarters, fabricated the core support, used the factory holes so we didn't have to drill any holes in the fenders. But then, of course, I wanted power steering, power brakes, and air conditioning, but I didn't want any of that seen under the hood. So people look at it and you don't notice at first, but there's two alternators. And that's because the power steering pump's electric, it's in the trunk, the AC compressor's electric, it's in the trunk. And the power brakes boost is electric and that's mounted on the frame so i've got everything i got power steering power brakes um air conditioning it's on two complete electrical systems so if something goes out on one side it doesn't affect the other side you know and you can see the size of the alternator cables they might as well be welding cables over there uh so you know two-stage fuel injection uh, alcohol injection and uh, it runs, runs real good <laughs> and how fast will this go or have you had it out yet well no nah, i mean it's a new build i got maybe two hours of run time on it but with the pulleys on it now it's around 1100 1150 horsepower oh my gosh and are you actually going to get this out now that it looks like this oh yeah oh yeah i built it to drive i don't no. now i keep trailer queens and ed yeah what are you gonna What are you gonna think when you uh, he says he's taking it out on the road? You know what? I'm all about that. I love it when my clients drive it because if you don't drive it, nobody sees it. But also, you don't have any fun. Um, but my Dragon Lord van that I drove 2,700 miles last year to SEMA and back. I mean, I got a couple of little teeny chips, but you don't notice it. And even okay. even now, as well, you just filmed this, there's a, quite a few scratches and chips here and there, but you don't notice it because mm -hmm. overall the image still just you know it speaks louder than those little chips. And like I said, if you don't, if you build a car just to be trailer queened or be in a museum, it's not a car anymore. It's just a, it's it's, a paperweight, you know? Yeah. Pretty one, but. Yeah, so I'm just wondering, do you do car shows down there in Florida? Yeah, you just I only did guys. one with this. It's like I said, it's only been, it just actually got done enough to drive maybe a week ago. <laughs> and when you take it to a car show, your first car show when it's done, and you pull in and everybody says, that's it, pack up, I'm going home? Pretty much. You did pretty good, actually, in the good guys, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, they, no, they didn't make good guys. There's a big one down there that attracts 800, 900 cars. Yeah, in South Florida. And uh, this took right, second uh, place. And the overall... Realistically, it should have yeah. taken first. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's how I they like had it. had a prejudice against the 55 shot. <laughs> yeah. And, Ed, before we let you go, what is your project for next year? Or do you know? I know. 
<laughs> Can you tell us even a little I, bitty I, hint? You are going to be here, okay. right? Yes, I will be here. I can tell you a little bitty hint. Uh, one of the projects. This is one of them. So I can't tell you the one of them. It has a, a lot. One? Of you're, you're doing more than one? Multiple cars. But the one that I'd like to talk about is the one that's really kind of close to me because it's another van. It's ah. a full-size van, and it is, it's coming from Florida. St. Augustine, Florida. I don't, okay. All of a sudden, everything's Florida for me. But yeah, <laughs> so it's coming from Florida, and it's a 1974 Dodge van. That's all I'm going to say. I can't say anymore. Uh, are, are we going to... This one, I will tell you right now. We're wandering around the parking lot. I I had saw a message at one point that Ed was going to be here, but I couldn't find it again. So I didn't know how to... I'm like, okay, we're walking through the parking lot and I look and I go, oh my God, I got to go. Oh, crap. I know who that is. As soon as I saw it. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's one of those that. Well, I try to love, you know, it's all about up in the ante. It's like, can you get that line work and that crisp detail that takes that extra five or six hours to do for every little image that you do? rather than just freehand airbrushing, which gives you that softer line. And it looks great from 10 to 15 feet away, but when you get on top of something like this, and you're looking at those dull, those $20 bills, and you start seeing the etching, that yes. makes the difference. Because then and I've had more people think that things are a wrap that I do. I'm I keep saying great. it's not a wrap. See, I thought your van last year was, and then I was so embarrassed because uh, I'm like, he's like, no, I painted that. I'm like, oh, sorry. But and the way I look at it as a compliment, I'm like, hey, you know, when I can hand paint something that looks almost like it was somehow photographed, I guess that's good. And I look at it this way. When we talked to you yesterday, you said, oh, did you notice the little details, you know, the names of, of the people and on the $20 bills? And it's like a Where's Waldo on the car. And I know with your van, when you showed that to me last year, it was amazing. So I have no doubt SEMA 2020 you're going to show up with something and we're all just going to be blown away. Well, I'll, I'll tell you right now, too, that I still find little details on here that I didn't know about. And there's one that you, you probably didn't even show it. I'll show you right now. Uh -huh. oh, I, did. I don't know what it is. I didn't notice for the longest time that he actually put a driver inside that car. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a woman. Sure. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> I think it is a woman driving that car, and she is, uh, you know, she's probably in charge. Come to find out it was Junior Johnson was moonlighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moonshining, huh? I was going to say, you know what? We know somebody else was in charge of that whole uh, operation. It usually is, hey. Well, get y'all back over here, and Good. thank you very much for showing us your amazing ride and your amazing work on his amazing ride. And I think everybody should come over and see it. And you're gonna be showing it in Florida? Yeah, well, I'm gonna be taking it all over once I get all the kinks worked out of it. You gonna be bringing it back to Vegas anytime? If I get invited. <laughs> There's a couple of actually people that have asked, actually asked him if he would come on up this way. I, yeah. There's one big one in Scottsdale, Arizona. They're talking yeah, I'm going to take it out. Maybe not this year, but the good guys next year in Scottsdale. Yep. Oh, we'll see. Um, there you go. There's a National Street Rod Association, Southeast Nationals. That's in Tampa, I think, in February. So I'll take it to that one. Well, I'm just thinking that it's going to be a shame if people can't see this because I, I know no matter what I get on video, it will not, it will not do justice to what this is when you see it in person. So. Thank you both. And Ed, I will see you next year with something unbelievable. Multiple things, yes. And Joe, if I'm ever in Florida, I'm going to be watching for this cruising down the street. You'll, you'll see it. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I want to point one thing out to you. Okay. I gotta open, let me open the door. Let me get this out gently. <laughs> I were. Yeah. You see three pedals there. You see a clutch pedal. Yes. The transmission in here is an old 1960s era clutch turbo transmission, which means it's an automatic transmission with the bell housing cut off it and a manual transmission clutch. So you have to use the clutch when you come to starts and stops. And then after that, it's no clutch shifting. And, oh, really? Yeah, and that was around before the racers designed the trans brake. So you could tack the engine up to whatever you wanted to, pop the clutch, and 
and off you go, but then not have to worry about missing a ship. So my uh, my buddies up at JW Transmissions in Rockbridge, Florida, did that, and you know it's just a lot of fun. That I've I've never heard of that before. No, no, they're extremely rare nowadays. Most people actually have them. It's a factory. Factory interior, uh, Delray edition, which I came to find out was actually named it for Delray Beach, Florida, which I never knew about. <laughs> I know, isn't that something? Um, we kind of tucked the roll bar back a little to hide it so you don't really see it from the sides. Um, you know, the console always hand fabricated. It's uh, just a lot of subtle work in here. I was going to say, the dashboard is just beautiful and it has that old time look yeah. with, you know, the way it is. Yeah, I'm, I just, I love it. Very cool, man. Thank you.